Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India This is the third module in cell physiology where we will discuss some biophysical principles. The first of them being the Donan effect and the Donan equilibrium. Some sources discuss these two phenomena as synonymous, but it helps me to understand issues better when the description makes a subtle difference between these two terms, the Donan effect and the Donan equilibrium. And that is what I hope to convey in this session. Donan effect can be deleterious to the cell and a cell has to evolve mechanisms to overcome the Donan effect so as to achieve an equilibrium state which is referred to as the Donan equilibrium. Life is believed to have evolved in the oceans. Let us build a story from there. Let us imagine that the very first unicellular organisms had a membrane which was permeable to all that was there in sea water and therefore had concentrations of sodium and chloride like sea water. The cell then starts laying down proteins and phosphates within itself. These organic ions are large, they cannot cross the membrane and they happen to be anions. We now have a set of organic anions within the cell which are impermeant. The resulting negativity within the cell will cause chloride to move out of the cell along its electrical gradient. Chloride being a negative ion, the internal negativity will cause chloride extrusion, but this cannot go on forever because internal chloride would have reached very low values. Now there is a concentration gradient for chloride and chloride would tend to move in the opposite direction as well. Chloride concentration internally will come to an equilibrium state when the concentration gradient balances the electrical gradient or in essence the electrochemical gradient for chloride movement reaches zero. By equilibrium, we mean a state where ion movement is minimal. If that's about chloride, since enough chloride cannot be extruded as the concent concentration gradient that has developed prevents further chloride extrusion, the internal negativity is nevertheless there and this now sets up an electrical gradient for sodium to move into the cell, sodium being a cation. Sodium entry will cause the cation concentration within the cell to increase. Now that sets up a reverse gradient for sodium, a concentration gradient for sodium. Therefore, internal sodium will also reach a level where the concentration gradient for sodium will balance the electrical gradient. We now have a situation where the concentrations of the two permeant ions within the cell have changed from the initial state. Because of an impermeant organic anion having come into the cell, the impermeant ion being an anion the permeant anion concentration in the cell is lower than outside and the permeant cation concentration in the cell is higher. This looks like a dream state as if an equilibrium can be reached but we are not yet there because another caveat of these impermeant ions within the cell is that the total concentration of solute within the cell will be more than the outside or the osmolarity 
within the cell will be higher than outside. This is going to result in water entry into the cell. Water will move towards a region with a higher osmolarity and the force with which water moves is the osmotic force and that is what is defined as the os osmotic pressure of the solutes within. There is a net excess of osmotic pressure within the cell and that is going to cause water entry into the cell. Now if water enters, it is going to dilute both sodium and chloride from a possible equilibrium state that we discussed earlier and that will lead to further entry of salt which will again cause water entry. We will eventually have a vicious cycle where more and more solute and water will enter the compartment with the impermeant ion. If the water entry is not prevented, the cell will swell, an animal cell will swell and eventually lice. This is indeed what we refer to as the possible outcome of the Donan effect. Net water entry into the compartment with the impermeant ion because of the higher osmolarity within that compartment will lead to a cycle of solute entry followed by further water entry and will prevent the establishment of an equilibrium state. This will result in cell swelling and lysis. This effect has to be countered if the cell has to maintain its volume by limiting water entry. If water entry is prevented, then an equilibrium state can be achieved and that equilibrium is what is referred to as the Donan equilibrium. Let us look at strategies that plant cells and animal cells adopt to handle the Donan effect and to achieve an equilibrium state. The plant cells have taken the easy option. They have developed cell walls around themselves to limit water entry. Any water entry will increase the hydrostatic pressure within the plant cell because it is caged within a rigid cell wall which will not allow the cell to expand. So there is no danger of the cell expanding and breaking up. If that is what plant cells have done, animal cells do not have cell walls and they seem to have handled the issue a little more imaginatively. If the Donan effect which can cause cell swelling and lysis is due to the presence of impermeant ions within the cell, the animal cells have evolved strategies to maintain an impermeant ion outside the cell so that water entry due to the impermeant ion within the cell can be balanced by water exit due to an impermeant ion outside the cell. And what is a better impermeant ion outside than the most abundant cation outside the cell, the sodium indeed. Sodium being maintained as an impermeant ion outside will pull water out of the cell. The opposing Donan effects of the impermeant ions on either side of the cell membrane will balance each other and therefore prevent cell swelling and consequent lysis. We should now consider how the cell maintains sodium as an impermeant ion outside. The answer is obvious. The cells have sodium pumps which are ATPase enzymes which can cleave ATP and utilize that energy to pump out sodium even against a concentration gradient. That is how the cell is going to keep sodium out of itself and that will balance 
the osmotic effect of impermeant ions within the cell. Pumping out of sodium is not without consequences. Obviously, sodium concentration inside the cell will decrease and we do need cations within the cell to balance all those anions as per the dictates of electroneutrality. Sodium pump itself achieves that by pumping in potassium into the cell and therefore we call it the sodium potassium pump. Potassium concentration outside is very low and that potassium is recruited and pumped into the cell to build concentrations within the cell as required to balance all those anions within the cell. Now at this point you might wonder what is the point in pushing out an osmolite while pushing in another solute. Here is where we have to understand that the issue is having to keep one ion on the outside as an impermeant ion so as to create a donan effect there just like the protein anions within the cell create a donan effect inside the cell. Distribution of other cations or other ions should not matter as long as you have managed to keep one ion outside the cell as an impermeant ion. What do we mean by sodium being an impermeant ion? Is it impermeant at all? We have done extensive discussions on sodium transporters on the cell membrane, sodium co-transporters and sodium counter-transporters which utilize the sodium gradient, allow sodium to flow downhill thereby pull in other substances against their concentration gradient or push other substances against their concentration gradient whichever way. So, what do we mean by the statement that this the cell membrane is impermeable to sodium? Well, what we mean is that it is effectively impermeable because whatever sodium comes in is extruded by the sodium potassium pump. The cell has evolved mechanisms to keep sodium out, but it is seized on the opportunity of a low sodium within or a sodium gradient and utilizes that sodium gradient to bring in or push out substances as required against gradients. However, it continues to maintain internal sodium very low by pushing out whatever comes in. Much like this analogy, I take this from other sources. Here is a leaky boat which is like the cell and the water that leaks in is like the sodium that leaks in. It is not a bad thing for the cell because the cell has evolved that strategy to transport other substances. But whatever water that comes in is thrown out by the savior, the sodium potassium pump on the cell membrane. Whatever leak happens within the cell is continuously thrown out so as to keep the boat from sinking or keep the cell from lysing. Sodium potassium pump in that sense is the principal volume regulator in a cell. We have seen in an earlier session that 50 percent of your energy expenditure at rest is entirely to energize all the sodium potassium pumps in all the cells of your body. Now if cell volume regulation or handling of donan effect by maintaining sodium as an impermeant ion outside is so important. You should understand that the cell must have redundant mechanisms and not just the sodium potassium pump while that is the principal sodium extruding protein. The cell does have redundant mechanisms and a knowledge about that would help you understand why inhibiting the sodium potassium pump with drugs like digitalis can be used to treat heart failure. Now getting back to the discussion on the donan effect and the equilibrium, we will resort 
to a more traditional discussion of the same which you would find in many other sources. If these are two compartments I and O which have permeant ions, ions which can permeate through the membrane separating the two compartments freely initially. It, these two compartments would be in perfect equilibrium, simple equilibrium. The ions would have distributed equally on either sides and there would not be any charge across the membrane. But if you introduce an impermeant ion on one side of the compartment, then there cannot be any simple equilibria anymore, but a dynamic equilibrium can be achieved where there is no perfect chemical equilibrium, no perfect electrical equilibrium and no perfect osmotic equilibrium. Nevertheless, an equilibrium state can be re reached and that kind of a dynamic equilibrium where all the disequilibria balance out each other is what is referred to as the Donan equilibrium. And that equilibrium can be achieved only if water entry is limited. In this case, presence of an impermeant ion on one side of the compartment will reduce the concentration of the permeant anions or co-ions in this case in that compartment and will increase the concentration of permeant cations or the counter ions. If the impermeant ion is an anion, this is a counter ion. The concentration of the permeant counter ion within that compartment would be higher. This is what we have seen earlier, but we also saw that a third condition is that the sum of all the ions on this side will be higher than the other side. So there would be a higher osmolarity on this side, but now let us get a little more specific and say that the sum of just the permeant ions on this side itself will be higher than the other side. The square bracket means concentration. The sum of concentrations of the permeant ions on this side will be higher than the outside. And of course, add on the concentration of the impermeant ions as well and then the total would be higher which is what results in a higher osmolarity on this side. And a fourth condition which we have not discussed earlier is that the product of the permeant cations and anions on this side will be the same as the product of the two on the other side. The problem we had was that the total number of ions on the side with the impermeant ion is going to be higher and that would exert a net osmotic pressure. Osmotic pressure can be thought of as a suction pressure where water would move towards the side with a higher osmolarity. The osmolarity on this side being higher, there would be water entry and even in such a system, the water entry cannot happen indefinitely because any water that moves into this compartment will increase water level there and this compartment would now have a higher hydrostatic pressure as compared to the other compartment and when that hydrostatic pressure or the height of the water column can balance the osmotic pressure, the excess osmotic pressure here, then water entry would stop and this system can come to an equilibrium. Technically, water entry can be prevented by applying a piston on one side. So then the system will come to an equilibrium easily because you have not allowed for water entry. This is in fact what the plant cells have done. They have limited water entry or prevented water entry by caging themselves within a rigid cell wall. Whereas animal cells have chosen to keep an ion on the outside as an impermeant ion. 
an effectively impermeant ion because whatever comes in is extruded with the help of the sodium potassium pump. Extrusion of sodium however has to be accompanied by inclusion of another cation within the cell and that cation happens to be potassium. The animal cell therefore has achieved a double donin equilibrium where donin effect of the impermeant anions within the cell is balanced by the donin effect of the impermeant, effectively impermeant cation outside the cell. Having reached an equilibrium state, the dictates of donin equilibrium will still hold good for the animal cell even though it is multiple ion species. The first two conditions would therefore be like this. The total concentration of permeant anions within the cell will be lower than the other side and the total concentration of cations within the cell will be higher than the concentration of cations outside the cell. With this, we complete a discussion on the donin effect and donin equilibrium. From here, we will move on to membrane potentials in the next session. Thank you for watching this NPTEL lecture.